Almost 10 million children in Nigeria do not have access to education. This is the highest recorded figure of out-of-school children anywhere in the world. Around 90% of this number are in the northern region of the country, where the vast majority of them, over 60%, are girls. Poverty, low perceptions of the value of education for girls, and early marriages have been cited as reasons for the high number of out-of-school girls in northern Nigeria. And despite some interventions to encourage parents to send their daughters to school, enrollment of the girl child has remained discouragingly low, especially for girls from the poorest households. When in a family there are more, there are girls and more children, uh, you find that automatically it is the boys that will be sponsored. So when it comes to choosing who to send to school, especially when they have limited resources, they choose the boy's child. They believe that the girl's child will eventually marry to another family, so they will not spend their resources to train her. When there are so many children to cut her for, it is normally the girl child that will pay the price. In a small village in rural Duse in Jigawa State, young Seratu Mohammed prepares to go out for the day. She's just 12 years old, and like many other young girls in northern Nigeria, she roams the streets of Duse every day, hawking until her wares are sold. <laughs> Many poor families in northern Nigeria rely on the girl child for survival. So, if she does not do this, there may be no food for her to eat and for the rest of the family. Six hundred kilometers away from Dutse, in a small settlement on the outskirts of Sokoto, Hadiza Mohammed prepares for the day. She remembers a time when she was much younger and had dreams of becoming something more than just another village girl. However, her dreams were cut short when her parents married her off to an older cousin at the age of 10. By the time Hadiza turned 22, she was already pregnant for her sixth child. And then one day, the unexpected happened, and a hard life suddenly became unbearable. With no education, no skills and no job, it was near impossible for Hadiza to fend for her children. So, she was forced to send her two oldest daughters, little girls who were not even in their teens, to go and hawk so that they could buy food to eat. It was a hard thing to do. Knowing what a lack of education had cost her, Hadiza's greatest wish was to see her children go to school. But with no money to even feed, sending them to school was impossible. Until one day, the school's headmaster came with unexpected news and told her that her daughter, Faiza, had been selected to receive a yearly grant that would guarantee that she could stay in school without having to pay any money.
500 kilometers away from Sokoto, in a small village just outside Kano City, Binta Omar and her daughters are preparing dinner. Just like Adiza in Sokoto, Binta's desire was to see all her children, especially her daughters, go to school. But unlike Adiza, money was not the only challenge that Binta had to face. <laughs> Even though Binta had finally convinced her husband to allow her send her daughters to school, she could barely afford to pay for their books and uniforms. And then she was told that her three daughters had been selected to receive a yearly grant to support their education. The voices of these vulnerable young girls were heard loudly when the Global Partnership for Education collaborated with the federal government of Nigeria to address these education challenges and improve access to and quality of basic education. Under the umbrella of the Nigeria Partnership for Education, NIPEM, the Global Partnership for Education made available a $100 million grant in 2014, and the five states of Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, Katsina, and Sokoto were selected as beneficiary states. The grant was approved in 2014, but the project became effective 2nd of November 2015. At that time, statistics showed that about 70% of the out-of-school children in Nigeria were resident in those five states. Kanu, Kaduna, Sokoto, Jigawa, and Katsina. It is on record that Kanu alone had about 3 million, over 3 million out-of-school children. These are issues NIPEP aims to address. NIPEP is divided into three main components. The first component is designed to promote school effectiveness and improve learning outcomes. The second component focuses on increasing access to basic education for out-of-school children, especially girls while the third component focuses on strengthening planning management system, including learning assessment and capacity development. Each of these three main components has sub-components that address specific challenges in the education sector. Under the project design, a yearly monetary allowance is made available to children from the poorest households. The money is given to the parents, especially mothers, so that they can provide the basic school needs of their children and also start small businesses to sustain the education of their children. With the kind of investment, the little, you know, local small scale investment they made from the, you know, uh, cash transfer. When we saw what, you know, someone uh, buying uh, cows, you know, goats, you know, they rear them and sell, make profits, and then proceeds from there, they, they use the proceeds to, you know, meet up with the requirements, the needs of their female uh, children uh, in terms of school provisions. So there, there is really, really a positive change. Because before then, you know, you have to struggle with these women before they release the children to school. But now, you know, they are very proud of what's happening. Blessing Azuka had been married for almost 15 years before her husband died and left her with eight young children to cater for. After his burial, things took a turn for the worse. Before my husband died, my, my children, they go private school. So after when he died, when no money again, I can't carry them, come public uh, school. So one day, nine, nine, the headmistress can't come me. They make a come, so I come now. Say to the one help one of my bikinos, say make her come. So as we come now, now they start the project. Before they come help us with the, the 45,000, that last year. So after a while I collect the money now, I buy their school 
uniform, sandals, bag, all what they need. And the children are twins. So the one I do for the other one, I go do for the second twins. So I say, oh, come. Do I say, the remaining money, I come to take and they do business. Small, small. Then I say, oh, take the manage. Across the five states where the GPE NIPE project has been implemented, the success rate has been remarkable. Female student enrollment is at an all-time high, with many schools even recording a higher number of girls than boys. What gives me most of it is that I will be able to provide access. A large number of children are now coming into school, especially girls. We see schools that uh, sometimes don't have uh, even a single girl in the school. Even if they have it on the register, but they are not coming to school. But presently, there is a kind of competition that uh, the girls are even in some places trying to be more than the boys. The 20,000 Naira, which is the cost of the scholarship for the girl child, is really impacting very well in sending the girl child to school. Mothers now are comfortable in sending the girl child to school. They have money to address the issue of the school needs. They buy uniforms, they buy some books, they give them breakfast money and they also have another way of doing it which is they get some part of the money like 5,000 Naira to buy goods so that they will use it for sustainability. The, the scholarship may cease by the time the girl child is in class 4. So the goat will continue to give off more and more and they will be able to sell this goat so that the child will continue schooling up to the university level. That's what they have been telling us and the mothers are very happy about the grants. Now they have some resources at their disposal which they can use to send the girl child to school. The girl is now regular in school, she doesn't have to hug and then after school she has time to stay at home to read. She will not go out to hug because the mother has something with her. So this is the impact of the scholarship. Beyond ensuring improved access to education for the girl child, another key component of the GPE NIPE project is in supporting female teacher development. The sleepy village of Yabo in Sokoto is home to the SKS Model Primary School, where decades ago, a former Nigerian president studied as a young boy. The school was established in some 96 years ago, that is in 1922. Elected president of Nigeria, Alaysia Osman Ali Shagari, is a product of this school. He graduated here in 1930. In a classroom within the school premises, a new crop of leaders is being shaped here under the tutelage of Nafisat Bo. Passionate about imparting knowledge, Nafisat's dream was to pursue higher education after her NCE, but lack of funds stalled her dreams until Naipep showed up. <laughs> to say mun kaji cewa na pep ta shigo cewa za ta tallafa muna mu yi karatu na NCE har mu kare to ga lokaci nan na ni kware shigawon karatu ina matakin harko na biyu har yanzu ina mataki na uku gashi na yi karatu na kala samun wani experience cikin kai na ga ni ina ishuwa in karantar cikin aji kuma yanzu ina tunanin nan zuwa bade zan ashi takarda ta ta NCE ke ga takardar ma dai ta zama abin bugon gaba gare ni Till date, 10,649 female teachers across the five states of Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, Katsina and Sokoto have received grants to enable them acquire more knowledge and be better equipped to serve as teachers and role models, especially for the growing number of female students. If you want girls to come to school and to see worthy mentors, the teachers need to upgrade. So the, the scholarship was given to the female teachers to upgrade on part-time basis so that there will be qualified teachers in rural areas for the girls to serve as mentors. We have instances in some of these states where NAPEP is implemented where after assisting the, the, the female teachers to obtain NCE on her own, she is financing herself to upgrade to a, a first degree. I'm very excited the time I got the alert 
<laughs> I'm very excited because it's really helped me. I find it easy to be in the school and I even find it easier to buy my materials like handout and textbook and we thank the organization that assists us with this fund and we hope they will continue to be supporting people like me in education. Beyond the specifics of providing development grants for female teachers, the project also has a subcomponent called Teachers Professional Development, TPD. Under this component, teachers in the five beneficiary states received various kinds of trainings to boost their capacity and ability to deliver knowledge. Teachers are empowered through teacher professional development capacity workshop where particular skills are impacted on the teachers uh, to ensure that a better teacher learning transaction. Yusuf Iro is a teacher at Bebeji Primary School, Katsina. He recollects with excitement how the trainings he received has impacted on his teaching skills. Children of primary 2, 3, he only knows ABCD by song, but he couldn't identify it. With this training, a primary 1, stu uh, children know the sound, know it is action, and they know how to blend it. Action, action, sound, sound. This Jolly Phonic uh, program really put me to to know that now I am a teacher. Because anytime I come to class, share a phone with a children, uh, enjoy our lesson, very interesting lesson, very interesting program. Just a primary one student, within three days with this program, he know how to form a simple word. Their performance have, has been improved much more better than before. Heavy clap, everyone. Hey! Thank you very much. We are doing a kind of training that is a uh, focus on the early grade, so that these children will come up with the basic skills to be able to read and write at early age. So that's what we are doing now, and uh, we have seen changes. Yeah, changes. So, if we are in choir, we are making a kaje da bakasa mukai karatumba. Ye desa ke choir we are ada da bang yanzuku makazi ana choir makaye de unkazo kai mazaka choir we are da ke kia wan karatu. Kenga ayan sambambanchi. One key focus of the GPE NIPA project is to see to it that beneficiary schools create a more conducive environment for learning, both at the primary and the pre-primary school levels, with special emphasis on early child development. To this end, 20,580 primary schools and 10,998 pre-primary schools across the five states received grants to carry out minor renovation works and procure materials that could be used to create a more conducive learning environment for the children. Uh, we have school improvement grants. This school improvement grant we gave this is the third year we are giving to our schools. Uh, this year we are giving 600,000 naira to each school and whereby you have nursery and primary, you will receive 1.2. This money is to be used in maintaining the school, small, small, little, little issues. Let's say the blackboard is dilapidated. Let's say there is no writing materials. Uh, maybe the teacher needs uh, notebooks. Uh, the teacher needs some teaching aids and so on. To ensure that the school authorities use the funds that have been disbursed judiciously, the host communities are also fully involved. Through a schools-based management committee, SBMC, members of the community work with the school authorities to ensure that the schools are run properly, the funds are spent on what are most important, and that the children get the best quality of education possible. The SBMC is made up of members of the community, representatives of the school teaching staff, and even students who are usually represented by the school's head boy and head girl. Everyone's opinion matters here. SBMC Bashi nang aloka chinda makaranta na tafara. Da aka kawamana wana SBMC aka wire mana da aiken da SBMC ya kamata su yi awana makaranta. Na faruko SBMC muna muke lura da makaranta 
wani lokaci muka so akwai lokacin da muka gina wani aji wancan aji nan da kika ganshi din can last one din nan SBMC ne sun gina shi idan akwai wani gyara SBMC su ne suna duba sannan kuma suna da aiki da dama a makaranta masama ta wajen yara a unguwa ne wadanda suke yawo ba sa zuwa makaranta aikin SBMC ne su kawo su su yi magana da iyaye ko su kore yaran su kawo su makaranta Apart from monitoring the school's expenditure, one of the other key roles of the SBMC is to assist the project's drive to increase enrollment. This is achieved through one-on-one -on -one sensitization drives where members of the SBMC engage with parents in their homes. Prior to the introduction of the GPE NIPEP project, Hajia Amina has been advocating in her community for the education of the girl child. In the past, it was tough convincing poor parents to send their children to school. But with the coming of the GPE NIPEP, her work is now much easier. I need to to the sun cewa lalle wanga abde na da amfani ina shiga gidaje na ina fadakar da iyayen yara su yi kokari su ba iyayen su mata su shiga makaranta to sai sun ka nuna kamar cewa wai ana an san wasu kudi na da yawa ya an ka tafo makaranta ni ce ba haka nan na ba da yake yanzu an samu kungiyoyin da ka ba da taimako abin yana da soki shi yasa tallafin ya kawo min soki kware game da wadan kiran uwayen yara su kawo yaran su makaranta it has been three years since the GPE NIPEP was introduced to the five states of Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, Katsina and Sokoto. And the numbers show that these states have recorded remarkable progress, especially in the area of out-of-school girl-child enrollment. In Jigawa State, between 2015 and 2018, 56,577 primary school girls have been able to go to and remain in school on scholarship, which is a total of 191.7%, exceeding the original target of 29,506. In Kaduna State, between 2015 and 2018, 28,050 primary school girls have been able to go to and remain in school on scholarship, which is a total of 253%, exceeding the original target of 11,090. In Kano State, between 2015 and 2018, 149,697 primary school girls have been able to go to and remain in school on scholarship, which is a total of 201%, exceeding the original target of 29,506. In Katsina State, between 2015 and 2018, 94,642 primary school girls have been able to go to and remain in school on scholarship which is a total of 244.7%, exceeding the original target of 38,712. And in Sokoto State, between 2015 and 2018, 38,712 primary school girls have been able to go to and remain in school on scholarship, which is a total of 281.3%, exceeding the original target of 20,303. What the project did and it's very similar, it's the urgency. You see, before we talk, oh, we want to bring girls to school. But the GP, with the support of the Global Partnership for Education, we translate urgency into action, immediate action, using conditional cash transfer to girls to bring them to school, making sure that early childhood children at that level, they have access to education. The second one, is coalition. To achieve the objective of this project, government alone cannot do it. Development partners cannot do it. So you need all the key relevant stakeholders. So there's a coalition. So there's urgency, there's coalition. Then the third one is action. Because if there is urgency and there is coalition and there's no action, so the action part is what makes a lot of difference in this project. We'll be able to bring many of the guests to school in different states 
and uh, as far as we are concerned, at least since we start this project, we have half the number of children of guests that are supposed to be school. And in some states now, in the north, you are even having more guests in school. So as far as we are concerned, we have been able to demonstrate rhetorics into action. NIPEP has not only contributed to improving access and quality of basic education, but it has also improved significantly the socio-economic situation of many families. This has really impacted on the lives of the rural women who have benefited from this grant. So the purpose is now served. Parents are now fully committed, are now fully aware of their responsibilities as parents to their purpose education. NAPEP brought this awareness by bringing in all those concerns in education. So NAPEP has done 100% success in the state. And we shall continue to record the success in the next years ahead. God's willing. Sarah Chu no longer has to hawk in the morning. She now goes to school and hopes that someday she will be a doctor. Yeah, I don't care to take so good. Hadiza acknowledges that it may be late for her, but she believes that with education, her daughters will have a better chance than she did at making it in life. Life is still tough for Blessing, but things are much easier now, and she's hopeful that the future will be even better for her children. As this is things they come to school now, I know say one day, one day, it will go better for them. They will do better thing. They will come out me for science, the suffering. True, many of these children are too young to understand the implications of the support of the Global Partnership for Education and Nigeria Partnership for Education, NIPEP. However, they are happy that they are now able to go to school and pursue their dreams.